Hi, welcome back to Lynn Reads, the channel where we share powerful insights and personal growth lessons through great books. Have you ever wondered if reality is truly what it seems? In Helgoland, Carlo Rovelli takes us on a journey into the strange world of quantum physics, where cats can be both alive and asleep, and particles exist only through their relationships with others. If you enjoy what you hear and interested to buy the book, we've included a link to the book in the description below. Now, let's get started. Helgoland 2021 recounts the strange and fascinating journey of quantum mechanics. This slim yet profound book opens the door to a magical microscopic world, where phenomena are uncertain, unpredictable, and deeply counterintuitive. Carlo Rovelli is a leading theoretical physicist and the director of the Quantum Gravity Research Group at the Centre de Physique in Marseille, France. He has written several best-selling books on physics, including Seven Brief Lessons on Physics and Reality is Not What It Seems. In the summer of 1925, Werner Heisenberg, plagued by severe seasonal allergies, retreated to Helgoland, a small rocky island in the North Sea. There free from his incessant sneezing, the 23-year-old physicist immersed himself in thought about atoms. His insights sparked a revolution in physics and forever altered our understanding of reality. Through Rovelli's vivid storytelling, the book reconstructs the intellectual adventure behind the birth of quantum mechanics. Along the way, readers encounter Heisenberg's radical insights into the strange world of subatomic particles and the paradoxes that continue to puzzle scientists to this day. Heisenberg launches a new and complex field, quantum physics. The early 20th century was an exhilarating time for ambitious young physicists. Niels Bohr, the Danish pioneer, had discovered something peculiar. When heated, atoms emitted light at fixed frequencies. This suggested that electrons, the tiny particles orbiting the nucleus, could only exist at specific energy levels or orbits. Heisenberg began asking the big questions. Why do electrons orbit only at certain distances? Why do they jump from one orbit to another in discrete quantized steps? His goal was to unravel the mechanics of these mysterious quantum jumps. At the time, classical physics could not explain this. Classical mechanics described motion using variables like position, velocity, and energy. But electrons defied this framework. Their orbits and transitions could not be pinned down. Physicists could only observe how the emitted light changed when electrons leaped from one orbit to another. Heisenberg's breakthrough was to focus only on observable quantities, the frequencies and amplitudes of the light emitted during these jumps. He reformulated the laws of physics, replacing individual variables with complex matrices that captured every possible transition. The mathematics was daunting, but the results perfectly matched Bohr's experimental data. Meanwhile, Owen Schrödinger approached the puzzle differently. He imagined electrons not as particles orbiting the nucleus but as waves spread out around it. Using wave equations, Schrödinger could also predict Bohr's observations with great precision. But a problem arose. Waves are diffuse and spread continuously whereas electrons, when observed, appeared as discrete points, unmistakably particles. How could two seemingly incompatible models, Heisenberg S, particle-like matrices and Schrodinger S wave equations, both be correct? The answer came from Max Born. He proposed that Heisenberg's matrix mechanics explained what was observed, while Schrodinger's waves represented the probability of those observations. In this new quantum world, electrons behaved like waves until measured, at which point they appeared as distinct particles. But this led to an even deeper mystery. Why do electrons transform this way? The principle of superposition raises difficult questions about the nature of reality. One of the most famous thought experiments illustrates the strange and unsettling world of quantum physics. Imagine a cat placed inside a sealed box, together with a special device. If activated, the device releases a strong sedative, putting the cat to sleep. Now suppose the device is triggered by a specific quantum event, such as the decay of a single atom. According to Schrödinger's equations, the probability of this event occurring at any given moment is 50 50ths. That means that, until the box is opened, we cannot know whether the atom has decayed or not. In other words, the cat is simultaneously both asleep and awake. This is the principle of quantum superposition. The coexistence of two contradictory states at the same time. Superposition has baffled physicists and philosophers alike for decades, forcing them to grapple with the question of how reality itself operates. This famous scenario, known as Schrödinger's cat, represents a central mystery of quantum mechanics, although it seems impossible that superposition could truly occur. Experiments show that it does. For instance, a photon of light can behave as if it travels along to distinct paths at once. Several interpretations attempt to explain this paradox. The many worlds theory. According to this idea, the cat is both asleep and awake, but in different timeline, each possibility becomes real in its own universe. Since quantum events happen constantly, there are effectively infinite versions of reality branching out. Even the observer splits into multiple versions, each seeing a different outcome, the hidden variables theory. This interpretation suggests that Schweger's wave does not fully describe reality. Instead, 
some deeper unknown mechanism determines the actual outcome. There is only one physical reality, but our knowledge is incomplete. In this view, the cat is either asleep or awake, and the uncertainty lies in our ignorance rather than in reality itself. Quantum Bayesianism, Cubism. This view treats Schrödinger's probabilities as incomplete information rather than descriptions of reality. When the observer opens the box, they simply gain new information. Reality is understood piece by piece, through interactions. But this raises a deeper question. Who counts as the observer, and why should they have such a privileged role? The relational interpretation reveals a world of constant interaction and change in the traditional picture of quantum mechanics. Superposition persists until a conscious observer measures it. For example, an electron exists as a cloud of probabilities until a scientist measures its position with a detector at which point the cloud collapses into a single outcome. But why should the scientists be special? Why should their role as an observer carry such unique weight? Is it the lab coat, the scientific instruments, or simply the fact that they are conscious beings? The relational interpretation offers a different answer. In this view, observation is not limited to human awareness. Instead, any interaction counts as a kind of observation. In quantum mechanics, the term observation is often misunderstood, as if it implies a sharp boundary between the physical universe and a conscious human watching from the outside. Relational quantum theory dissolves this boundary. In reality, every entity in the universe can be both an observer and the observed. The universe is filled with wonders, photons, rainbows, cats, clocks and galaxies. None of these exist in total isolation. They are constantly interacting, and it is precisely these interactions that give rise to their physical properties. If something never interacted at all, it would not exist in any meaningful way. Thus, every physical property, every piece of information is relational. It appears, shifts, and disappears depending on context. In fact, we already know this in everyday life. A property like speed only exists relative to something else. If you are walking on the deck of a moving ship, your speed is different depending on whether it is measured against the ship itself or against the water below. Understanding the world as an infinite network of relations is challenging, but it aligns with the quantum reality. Returning to shredging his cat, Inside the box, the cat state depends on its relationship with the trigger device. For you outside the box, the situation is different. Both descriptions are valid, because each belongs to a different web of relations. Reality itself depends on which relational frame you are considering. The relational model sheds light on quantum entanglement. Imagine two photons existing in a state of quantum superposition, each capable of appearing either red or blue. Just like shredging his cat, their exact states cannot be determined until they are observed. Each outcome has a 50% probability. Now suppose one photon is sent to Vienna and the other to Beijing. When the photon in Vienna is observed, it appears either red or blue. Let's say it appears red. If the relational rules of probability applied independently, then the photon in Beijing should appear red only half the time. But the strange reality is that if the photon in Vienna is observed to be red, the photon in Beijing will always be red every single time. This puzzling connection is known as quantum entanglement. Entanglement is one of the most bizarre and counterintuitive phenomena in physics. When two photons are entangled, their properties remain correlated to then when separated by vast distances. Of course, correlation itself is not unusual. If you separate a pair of red gloves, each glove is still red. The difference is that entangled photons do not have any color at all until they are observed. So how can one photon always match the other? One explanation might be that the first photon sends a signal to the second, but experiments show entanglement persisting over distances where such a signal would have to travel faster than the speed of light, something prohibited by relativity. Another explanation might be that the two photons predetermined their colors before being separated, but this possibility is ruled out by a set of mathematical results known as Bell's inequalities, which demonstrate that no hidden pre-existing values can fully explain the observed correlations. So what is really going on here? The relational interpretation offers some clues. As we have seen, in the relational model, properties exist only through interactions, that is, observations. Since no entity can simultaneously observe both photons in Vienna and Beijing, there is no absolute property linking the two. The redness of the photon in Vienna exists only for observers in Vienna. For them, the photon in Beijing as well as everything else in Beijing remains in a quantum superposition until some interaction takes place between the two contexts. Comparisons are meaningless. Yet distant events are still connected through relationships. A scientist in Vienna can call a colleague in Beijing. That interaction, or observation, transmits information about the Vienna photon's redness, which then defines the correlated property of the entangled photon in Beijing. There is no mysterious faster-than-light signal at work, but rather a network of relations that assigns properties through connections. In this case, the two faraway photons interact not directly but through the scientists who observe and compare them. 
Philosophy and science are deeply intertwined. Ernst Mach may well be the most influential thinker you've never heard of, both a scientist and a philosopher. His provocative insights made him admired in some circles and sharply criticized in others. The Russian revolutionary Vladimir Lenin fiercely attacked Mach's ideas, while another revolutionary, Alexander Bogdanov, defended him passionately. The celebrated writer Robert Musel wove Mach's ideas into his monumental novel The Man Without Qualities. Meanwhile, both Einstein and Heisenberg openly acknowledged Mach's influence on their own groundbreaking discoveries. So what radical perspective did Mach advocate that could ripple across politics, literature, and physics alike? He argued that the world is made up of sensations, notion curiously aligned with the relational interpretation of quantum theory. During the 18th and 19th centuries, science was dominated by a philosophical stance known as mechanism. At its core, mechanism viewed reality as a vast, empty space filled with particles interacting like gears in a clockwork machine. For Mach, this view was useful but limited. He argued that mechanism was overly metaphysical and abstract. Instead, he believed science should focus strictly on what can actually be observed, sensations that arise when elements interact. This radical idea inspired Heisenberg to rethink the behavior of electrons and eventually opened the door to quantum theory. But Mach's influence went further. In his view of reality, material objects were not independent entities interacting mechanically. Rather, it was the interactions themselves that created the world. Observers were not outside this process, but part of it perceiving the world only through sensations that emerged from interactions. This foreshadowed the relational interpretation of quantum physics, where properties do not exist in isolation but only in context. Of course, Mach was no prophet of quantum mechanics. His insights highlight instead the profound interplay between philosophy and science. If Heisenberg had ignored Mach and clung rigidly to mechanistic principles, he might never have made his revolutionary breakthroughs. Similarly, modern philosophers can sharpen their understanding of reality by engaging with the latest advances in science, which raises a fascinating question. If we apply relational quantum theory to a complex subject like consciousness, what would it reveal? Analyzing relations and correlations may illuminate the laws of the mind. Spend a few minutes browsing online, and you'll quickly stumble upon dubious quantum claims. Self-proclaimed spiritual gurus preach quantum healing. Fraudulent doctors advertise miracle cures and tech entrepreneurs tout implausible quantum products. Quantum physics, with all its mystery, naturally sparks our imagination. But can it genuinely answer life's biggest questions? Can it explain love, beauty, truth, or the meaning of existence? Probably not. Yet applying the principles of relational quantum theory to the study of consciousness may still provide fresh ways of exploring the mind. Philosophy traditionally offers three main models of the mind. There is dualism, which treats mind as a separate almost spiritual entity apart from body and nature. There is idealism, which places mind at the center, suggesting it creates or defines all of reality. And there is naive materialism, which reduces mental phenomena to nothing more than physical processes. The relational interpretation of quantum mechanics proposes a different approach to see how, consider the concept of meaning. Human consciousness thrives on meaning. We see signs, read words, and form thoughts that point to or represent something beyond themselves. The German philosopher Franz Brentano described this as intentionality the mechanism by which we communicate and navigate reality. But how does intentionality arise? One possible answer is through relational information. Relational information emerges when two systems become correlated. For instance, when you notice a rock falling, your brain acquires information about an external object. That information is relevant because it prompts a physical reaction, say, stepping aside to avoid the rock. In this scenario, meaning is generated by the relationship between the external event and your internal state. Seeing the falling rock signals danger, and your mind instantly triggers action. However, this view only describes the physical correlations between systems. It doesn't explain the subjective experience of ducking away the lived feeling of fear and awareness. Understanding how subjective consciousness arises from relational information remains one of the deepest puzzles of both philosophy and science. Quantum physics can offer new perspectives on the world. When you look at a cat, what are you actually seeing? According to the traditional model of vision, perception is mainly about receiving information. Photons bounce off the cat's shape, fur, and whiskers before entering your eyes. Your retina converts the light into signals and sends them to your brain. Finally, neurons in your brain decode these signals into the image of a cute cat, but reality isn't so straightforward. In fact, your brain predicts what your eyes will see. The eyes still collect light, but they mostly send signals only when something doesn't match the brain's prediction. The difference between what we expect and what we actually detect is the crucial information that allows us to understand the world around us. This second hypothesis of vision, where the brain plays the leading role, comes from the concept known as the projective consciousness model. According to this theory, 
Consciousness arises from the brain's continuous adjustments of preformed ideas and mental representations based on incoming sensory data. In other words, our understanding of reality is a kind of confirmed hallucination, constantly updated and refined. In some sense, science itself works the same way. We dream up a model of how the world works, and then through experiments and observations, we discover all the ways reality challenges and reshapes those models, whereas the brain carries out this predictive loop in less than a second. Science does it over centuries, through collective effort across generations, our current quantum theories, including the relational interpretation or the latest outcome of this process. They provide the most accurate picture of reality we can presently observe, map, and measure. And yet, it is a very strange picture indeed. Relational quantum physics describes a world without stability or permanence. Instead of separate entities interacting in space, reality itself is a vast network of interactions, where events arise and dissolve in an endless web. We are not outside this network. On the contrary, we ourselves are products of these ongoing correlations. To see the world this way may feel disorienting even hallucinatory but this hallucination has been confirmed. The challenge now is to keep exploring where it may lead humanity in the future. At the dawn of the 20th century, a group of young physicists, including Werner Heisenberg, began to overturn the classical vision of physics. Instead of pursuing a mechanical deterministic universe, they replaced it with a quantum model defined by uncertainty and probability. In their view, quantum physics is not a stage filled with stable independent objects, but a web of unstable relationships, where reality and truth shift depending on which relations are being considered. Reading Helgoland by Carlo Rovelli is like stepping into a new dimension of thought, one that constantly challenges how we see reality itself. At first, quantum physics feels deeply counterintuitive. Ideas such as superposition, entanglement, and relational properties almost sound like paradoxes bordering on science fiction. And yet Ravelli's storytelling makes them not only comprehensible, but also profoundly meaningful. What struck me the most is how the book shows the interconnectedness of everything. Nothing in the universe exists on its own. Everything is defined by its relationship with something else. This is a humbling idea. It reminds us that we are not observers standing outside reality but active participants in the very web of interactions that makes the universe what it is. Another powerful aspect is the way Ravelli weaves science with philosophy. He doesn't just describe equations or theories, he situates them within human thought, history, and culture. In doing so, he reminds us that science and philosophy are not separate pursuits but complementary ways of exploring the mysteries of existence. For me, the greatest takeaway from Helgoland is not simply a deeper understanding of quantum physics but a shift in perspective. The book teaches us that truth is not fixed, but relational. Reality is not static, but fluid. In a world where we often crave certainty, this lesson feels both unsettling and liberating. Helgoland is more than a physics book. It is an invitation to rethink the foundations of knowledge, perception, and our place in the cosmos. It leaves you with a sense of awe, not because everything is explained, but because it reveals just how much there still is to discover. And that wraps up our deep dive into this remarkable book. We hope it's been valuable to you. If you're interested in more titles with similar themes, leave a comment with your thoughts and recommendations. You can also buy the book to experience it more clearly as well as support the author. I will leave the link in the description below for you to easily search. If you like the channel, you can press the like button, share and turn on the notification bell to receive new content. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.